To jump into the air, we bend our knees and press our feet against the ground with a force greater than our own weight. Which secret invisible forces are involved and what is the sum of the vertical forces? Choosing the usual y-axis to be upward, gravity reaches from below, producing the downward weight, mg, which gets a minus sign because it points in our minus y direction. As gravity presses your feet against the floor, in reaction, the floor presses upward with the normal force n that gets a plus sign because it points in the positive y direction. You also push downward against the floor with force p that gets a minus sign because it points in the minus y direction. The sum of the y forces is minus mg plus n minus p equals ma. If a 50 kilogram person jumps vertically to a height of 85 centimeters, with what velocity did that person leave the ground? We use v squared equals v0 squared minus 2g y minus y0. Set the final velocity v equals 0 and y minus y0 equals 0.85 meters. We get v equals 4.08 meters per second. If the person pushed against the ground for 0.25 seconds, what acceleration occurred during the push? We have A equals V0 over T equals 4.08 meters per second divided by 0.25 seconds equals 16.3 meters per second squared. What net force is needed to give the 50 kilogram person an acceleration of 16.3 meters per second squared. The net force equals ma equals 50 kilograms times 16.3 meters per second squared equals 816 fig newtons. Using leg muscles, the person can generate a push of twice the person's weight, that is, p equals 2 mg. What is the normal force? We had earlier decided that the sum of the vertical forces is minus mg plus n minus p equals ma. We saw for n equals ma plus p plus mg. Setting p equal to 2 mg, we get n equals ma plus 3 mg equals 816 newtons plus 3 times 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared equals 2300 newtons, which is 4.7 times the weight of the person. If the person stood on a bathroom scale and then jumped, the bathroom scale would read 4.5 times the weight of the person. Biologists put scales under the feet of every kind of walking and jumping creature, from insects to zebras, to measure forces. When you stand on the bathroom scale, the gravitational attraction between you and the earth pulls you downward with your weight mg against the surface of the scale. In reaction, that surface pushes upward with the normal force. In this case, the sum of the vertical forces is n minus mg equals zero, since the acceleration is zero. The bathroom scale measures the normal force n. What will the bathroom scale read while you are riding in an elevator? When the elevator starts to move downward, we feel lighter for a moment. When the elevator moves at constant velocity, our weight feels normal. When the elevator stops, our knees buckle a little and we feel heavy for a moment. With positive Y upward, here is the free body diagram for you standing on the scale in the moving elevator. The elevator scale and person all have the same acceleration. The scale measures the normal force n, which is also your apparent weight. While standing on a scale and riding in the elevator, Newton's equation is n minus mg equals ma, or n equals mg plus ma. We factor out mg and write this as mg times 1 plus ma over mg. Then we cancel the m to have 1 plus a over g times mg. 
but mg is your normal resting weight, w, so we have 1 plus a over g times w. Our apparent weight, n, is a multiple of our usual or resting weight, w. As the elevator begins to move downward with acceleration a equals minus 1 meters per second squared, n equals 1 plus a over g w equals 1 minus 1 over 9.8 equals 0.9 w, and we feel 10% lighter for a moment. When the elevator moves at constant velocity, the acceleration is zero and our weight feels normal. As the downward moving elevator slows to a stop, the acceleration is plus one meters per second squared. N equals one plus A over GW equals one plus one over 9.8 equals 1.1 W, and we feel heavier for a moment. As the upward moving elevator accelerates upward at one meter per second squared, we feel heavier for a moment because n equals 1 plus 1 over 9.8 equals 1.1 w. As the upward moving elevator slows to a stop, the acceleration is minus 1 meter per second squared. n equals 1 minus 1 over 9.8 equals 0.9 w, and we feel lighter for a moment. In conclusion, when the acceleration is upward, then the normal force will increase as if the person suddenly weighs more than usual. When the acceleration is downward, then A is negative and the normal force will decrease as if the person suddenly weighs less than usual. By the way, when you stand on two scales at the same time, then each reads mg over 2, which is half your weight. Push P equals 30 newtons is applied to a block of mass little m equal 5 kilograms that in turn pushes on a second block of mass big M equal 10 kilograms. What will be the acceleration of the blocks and with what surface force or contact force CR does the first block push rightward on the second? The positive x-axis points to the right. Little m pushes big M rightward with the contact force CR, and in reaction, big M pushes leftward on little m with an equal but opposite contact force CL. We have the vector force CL, which is leftward, is equal and opposite to the vector force CR, which is rightward. Here is the free body diagram for little m. The forces on little m are the rightward push P and the leftward contact force CL. So the sum of the forces is plus P minus CL equals little m times acceleration A. Here's the free body diagram for the big mass. The only force acting on the big mass is the rightward contact force CR. So the sum of the forces is plus CR equals big M times A. Imagine yourself being little m, pushed to the left into big M who resists being accelerated. This causes you to be squeezed, as might occur when being pushed in line. We can also write Newton's law for the system of combined mass, little m plus big M, by drawing a circle around the system and including only the external forces whose vector arrows poke across the circle. The external push, P, will accelerate both blocks toward the right with the same acceleration, and the sum of the forces for the system of combined mass is P equals little m plus big M times the acceleration A. Solving for A, we get A equals push divided by little m plus big M equals 30 newtons divided by 5 kilograms plus 10 kilograms equals 2 meters per second squared. Now that we know the acceleration of both blocks, we calculate CR equals big M times A equals 10 kilograms times 2 meters per second squared equals 20 newtons, which is equal and opposite to the leftward contact force CL.
Toddlers often fall backward onto their diaper cushion butt. This is Molly. If the 10 kilogram toddler has fallen vertically by 15 centimeters, what is her velocity? When hitting the ground, Molly's velocity goes to zero while the cushion compresses by one centimeter. What is the stopping force on her? Write this force as a multiple of her weight. Compared to a 100 kilogram adult falling one half a meter. Question A. If the 10 kilogram toddler has fallen vertically by 15 centimeters, what is her velocity? Choose the positive y axis to be upward. Using v squared equals v0 squared minus 2g y minus y0 with g equal plus 9.8 meters per second squared. Final height y equals 0. The initial height y sub 0 equals 0 0.15 meter. And the initial velocity v sub 0 equals 0 we get the final velocity v equal minus 1.7 meters per second. We choose the minus sign because the final velocity is in the negative y direction. After falling 15 centimeters, this is the velocity just before the cushion contacts the ground. Question B. Now Molly's velocity goes to zero as the cushion compresses by one centimeter. What is her acceleration? Using v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a y minus y0 with the final height y equals 0 meters. The initial height y sub 0 equals 0.01 meter. The final velocity is 0 and the initial velocity v sub 0 equals minus 1.7 meters per second which is downward. We get a equals 144.5 meters per second squared which points upward because it is a positive number. Written as a multiple of weight, W equal mg, we have the ratio of the stopping force to the weight equals mass times the stopping acceleration divided by the weight mg. We cancel the m's and have a over g equals 15. The stopping force is 15 times the weight. Question C. If a 100 kilogram person falls a half meter, what is the speed of this person just before hitting the ground? Using v squared equals v0 squared minus 2g y minus y0 with g equal plus 9.8 meters per second squared, y equals 0, y sub 0 equal 1 half meter, and v0 equals 0. We get the final velocity v equals minus 3.1 meters per second. Question D. If the person then comes to a stop in one centimeter, what is the acceleration and the stopping force? Using v squared equals v0 squared plus 2ay minus y0 with final height y equals 0 meter, y0 equals 0.01 meter, v equals 0 and v sub 0 equal minus 3.1 meters per second. We get a equals 480.5 meters per second squared. And the ratio a over g is 49 instead of 15. Question E. Why aren't toddlers hurt in the fall? Falling toddlers are not hurt because their center of mass falls only 15 centimeters. Heavy horses, cows, and elephants can break bones simply by falling. People are susceptible. Cats less so. Animals over 100 kilograms, which is 220 pounds, can be hurt when falling to a vertical distance equal to their own height. For animals having a mass in the range 100 grams down to 100 milligrams, their terminal velocity is low and are uninjured by a fall. A mouse is not hurt when falling five stories. The smallest creatures with a mass less than 100 milligrams do not fall through the air, but are carried with the wind wherever it might go. In their physics course, they are not interested in unexperienced free fall, only in hurricane force winds. While our lack of experience with unforced inertia makes us wrongly assume that all motion stops when pushing stops, 
These creatures assume that motion does not stop unless the wind stops. Who is right, us or them? Rather than checking to see if equal masses fall at the same rate, they might want to know if equal masses are blown by the wind at the same rate. The height of the trajectory decreases with each successive bounce. For example, a ball is dropped from height h, hits the ground, rebounds to height h over 2, falls back to the ground, rebounds to a height h over 4, and so on. Each bounce rises to half the height of the previous bounce. Question A. What is the total distance traveled by the ball? The total distance traveled is h plus one-half h plus one-half squared h plus one-half cubed h, and so on. This sum has a known result. Since we have one-half raised to the nth power, we put a one-half in this denominator to get h over one minus a half, which makes a half in the denominator, or a two in the numerator. We get the total distance traveled is 2h. Half of that distance occurred on the very first drop. Newton described this decay of height in terms of a coefficient of restitution. Question B. For the first fall from h equal 36 centimeters, the 350 gram ball bounces to a height of 18 centimeters. What is the vector velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground? Using v squared equals v0 squared minus 2g y minus y0 with g equal positive 9.8 meters per second squared, a final height y equals 0, initial height y sub 0 equals 0.36 meter, and initial velocity v0 equals 0, we get final velocity v equals minus 2.66 j hat meters per second. We choose minus j hat because the ball is traveling in our negative y direction. Question C. What is the vector velocity of the ball just after it leaves the ground? We need to know what initial upward velocity is needed to reach a height of 18 centimeters. Using the v squared equation again, we get the initial velocity v sub 0 equals plus 1.88 j hat meters per second. Question D. What was the vector acceleration and force while the ball was in contact with the ground for 0.11 seconds? The vector acceleration A equals delta V delta T equals the final velocity vector minus the initial velocity vector divided by the elapsed time equals 1.88 j hat meters per second minus a negative 2.66 j hat meters per second divided by 0.11 second gives plus 41 j hat meters per second squared. The force is F equals ma equals 14 j hat newtons. This force is in the upward positive direction. As a car travels down the road, the forces that act on it include the downward vertical weight mg, the normal force n that points perpendicular to the surface. The car wheels push backward against the roadway. In reaction, the road puts a force on the car that pushes it forward. The frictional force on the car points backward and is composed of an air friction plus rolling friction. Air friction includes the force needed to push air out of the way plus the force of the air being squeezed underneath the car. The coefficient of rolling friction is much smaller than the coefficient of sliding friction. For tires on concrete, the coefficient of sliding friction is 0 0.9, but the coefficient of rolling friction is 0 0.15. For railroad trains, having iron wheels rolling on iron tracks, the coefficient of rolling friction is about 0 0.002. How much force is needed to push a car? For a car of mass 1,000 kilograms and weight W equal mg equals 10,000 newtons or 2,200 pounds, 
The push needed to make the car slide is P equals the coefficient of kinetic friction times the weight equals 9,000 newtons or 2,000 pounds. The push needed to make the car roll is P equals the coefficient of rolling friction times the weight of the car equals 1,500 newtons or 350 pounds. It kind of takes a couple of persons to push a car with enough force to get it rolling. The forces that act on this airplane include the downward weight. The jet engine exhausts fuel backward at high speed, and in reaction, the exhausting fuel puts a force on the airplane that pushes it forward. The air resistance causes a backward drag force. Air flowing above and below the wing produces vertical lift. The lift force depends on the relative velocity of the air over the wings. While in flight, the area and shape of the wing can be mechanically altered to alter the lift force. During landing, the flaps are lowered to increase lift at this low velocity. The flaps are also lowered to increase lift during takeoff because the velocity is low. The lift grows with the velocity as kV, where k equal constant. When the upward lift, kV, matches the downward weight, mg, then the airplane lifts off the ground. The takeoff speed is mg over k. The flaps are in their normal position at cruising altitude, and at this high velocity, the upward lift force matches the downward weight, mg. To begin descending, the pilot reduces the engine thrust in order to reduce the velocity. Now the weight is greater than the lift force, and the airplane begins a controlled descent. The shape of the airplane is designed to allow the flow velocity and pressure to return to their upstream values. Here is the flow around a fish. The pressure nearly matches at the nose and tail so that there will be no pressure drag on the creature, but there will be skin drag, which depends on surface area, and viscous drag. An object affects fluid flow for a distance equal to several times the width of the object. The drag force is increased when a wall is nearby because the flow is forced to squeeze between the object and the wall. When airplanes approach the ground to land, the squeezed air makes for a cushion landing in what the pilots refer to as ground effect. The symmetrical flow around this sphere produces a drag force but no lift. If the sphere is pinched to make it unsymmetrical, then we get an airplane wing. As the air moves past the wing, it puts a net force on the wing. This net force is broken into a backward drag component and an upward lift component. The magnitudes of these components depend on the shape of the wing. Jet propulsion occurs in this balloon. The elastic material of this balloon squeezes air through the opening. In reaction, the expelled air pushes the balloon forward. This balloon has less elastic force. Squid expel water backwards to be pushed forward, and they can control the direction in which the water is expelled. Clams clap together their two shells so that the expelling water will propel them away from predators. The airplane wing-shaped cross-section of the sea turtle flipper is used to fly through water. The flipper is tilted 25 degrees below the direction of the animal's forward movement so that lift is generated on downstrokes. Divers and seals instead press backward against the water with their hind flippers to propel themselves forward. Here are the wings of a stingray at Siam Ocean World in Thailand. Here is a turtle at Ocean World in Kuala Lumpur. The tension in these strings match the weight of the persons. This is a one-half kilogram mass. The forces that act on the mass 
are the downward weight mg, which tries to pull the mass downward. The downward motion isn't occurring because the string is restraining the motion by putting an upward force on the mass. With positive y upward, the sum of the forces in the y direction are plus t minus mg equals zero since the acceleration is zero. The tension in the string is equal to the weight mg equals one half kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared equals 4.9 newtons. The hand above is supplying the tension. What are the vertical forces on the hand? The downward tension T and the upward force of muscles which occurs as long proteins are contracted. The force of the muscles is 4.9 newtons. If the hand let go then the downward acceleration of the mass would be G. How does the tension in the string change when the hand allows the mass to accelerate downward at less than g or accelerates upward at a portion of g? This scale measures force in fig newtons. The reading on the scale tells us the tension in the string. When the mass is stationary, the tension is 4.9 newtons. When the mass is pulled upward, the tension increases to 7 newtons. The sum of the y components of forces is plus T minus mg equals ma. So T equals m times a plus g. When a is upward and positive, then the tension increases because the string is not only supporting the weight of the mass, but it is also accelerating it upward. The negative acceleration decreases the tension because now the string is no longer supporting the full weight of the mass. When the tension is 7 newtons, what is the acceleration? We have A equals T minus mg all divided by m equals 7 newtons minus 4.9 newtons divided by a half a kilogram equals 4.2 meters per second squared, which is about half a g. When the acceleration is downward negative g over 2, what will be the tension? We have t equals m times a plus g, but a is minus g over 2, so we get m times g over 2, which is 2.5 newtons. The tension is reduced when the mass is allowed to accelerate downward. If the hand lets go of the string, then the tension becomes zero and the acceleration becomes minus g. Here, the reduced tension allows the mass to accelerate downward. In Atwood's machine, two masses are tied together with a string that passes over a pulley. The heavier mass accelerates downward, while the lighter mass accelerates upward. Both masses have the same velocity and acceleration because they are tied together by a string. If the masses are nearly identical, then the acceleration is a tiny fraction of g. When the device was first created in 1784, time was measured with heartbeats and pendulums and such, so this slowed motion was easier to measure. In Atwood's machine, the heavy mass, m1, falls downward as the lighter mass, m2, rises upward. Both masses have the same velocity and acceleration because they are tied together by a string. If the pulley and string are massless, what is the acceleration? We choose the plus y axis to point upward on the left and then pretend as if the pulley redirects plus y to point downward on the right. This is done so that there is one coordinate system for both masses. When the lighter mass M2 rises with positive acceleration, the heavier mass M1 falls with positive acceleration. If each mass was given its own coordinate system, then the calculation might produce the silly result that both masses are rising. Separately for each mass, write the sum of the y components of forces equals mass times the y component of acceleration. For the following heavier mass m1 on the right, we have a downward weight 
M1G, which is positive because it points in our downward positive Y direction, minus T because the tension points in the minus Y direction, equals M1 times A. For mass M2, we have downward weight minus M2G plus upward tension T equals M2 times A. We have two equations for the two unknowns, A and T. To add these two equations, we write down both of the left-hand sides, and then we write down both the right-hand sides as M1G minus T plus negative M2G plus T equals M1A plus M2A. The T's cancel, leaving this. We want to solve for A. A equals M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 times G. When M1 minus M2 is close to zero, then the acceleration A is close to zero. In the video, we had a heavier mass, M1 equals 501 grams, and M2 equals 500 grams, which gave A equals 1 divided by 1,001 times G equals 0 0.01 meter per second squared. Now that we have a number for the acceleration, we can use either of these two equations to find the tension. This equation gives T equals M2 times a plus G, and we get 4.905 newtons. We can also write F equals MA for the system of combined mass, M1 plus M2. We do this by drawing an envelope around the two masses and identifying the external forces that act on the system. The external forces have vector arrows that poke through the envelope. The tension acts between the masses so it will not accelerate the masses. F equals MA for the system is the sum of the external forces is the combined mass times the acceleration. The force arrows that poke across the envelope are a positive M1G and a negative M2G equals the combined mass times the acceleration. Or we solve for the acceleration a equals M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 multiplied by G. This is the same result that we got earlier with fewer algebra steps, but it's a little more dangerous in identifying which forces are external and which are not.